Okay, hypothesis tests that compare two proportions. So example one. In 1947, Gallup surveyed 1,100 adult Americans and asked, quote, are you a total abstainer from, or do you on occasion consume alcoholic beverages? Of the 1,100 adults surveyed, 407 indicated that they were total abstainers. In 2010, the same question was asked of 1,100 adult Americans, and in that group, 333 indicated that they were total abstainers. Now, has the proportion of adult Americans who totally abstain from alcohol changed? Let's use the, the alpha equals 0.05 significance level. So we're dealing with proportions right now. So we have the proportions um, in 1947. We'll call, you know what, let's just use group one. We'll have group one. This is 1947. And, and we'll let little p of one represent the proportion of adults, adult Americans, who abstain completely from alcohol. And group two, which was in 2010, this is the proportion of all adults in that year who abstain from alcohol. So we want to test the, the null hypothesis is that the proportion for the group in 1947, if there's no difference, these two proportions should be the same. And our alternative is we're testing to see have they changed. So we're not interested in higher, lower, but just different. So these are our two hypotheses. Now our data for group one, the number of successes was 407, said that they abstain out of a total of 110. And in group two, there were 333 who said they abstained, and that also had 1,100. It should be noted you do not need to always have the same sample size. So we're going to use technology to do our hypothesis test. So let's get our trusty TI, and let me get out of here. So once again, we are doing a hypothesis test. So you need to hit stat. And we are going to be doing a test. And now we are dealing with proportion. So number six, two proportion Z test. And this is now where we have to enter our information. So X1 is 407, which we have already entered. And out of 1100, X2 was 333. And it also had 1100. And our alternative is a not equals, which is already selected. So for this one, we see our test statistic. Excuse me. So this is about 3.34 standard deviations. So this is, you can barely see it in the tails. It's a two tail. So it's a little itty bitty, tiny proportion, tiny shaded region. That's our p value. And do you see it says 8.4 e negative 4? So that's 8.4 times 10 to the negative 4, which is the same thing as 0 0.0008, which is a very, very small p-value. So therefore, this p-value is much lower than our significance level. So this is saying we have strong evidence because it's such a small p-value. that the proportion of adults, oops, proportion, excuse me, the proportion, move this over a little bit, the proportion of adults who abstain from alcohol has changed from 1947 to 2010. And in this case, we do reject the null. 
but nobody ever says that in reports. But we have evidence that there's a difference. So let's go look at our second example. Example two. In many colleges and universities, educators are changing their approach to instruction from a, quote, teacher lecture-centered model to a, quote, student-centered model, where students learn in a laboratory environment in which they proceed at a pace that's suitable to their learning needs and lecture is de-emphasized. In one school where the model was being introduced, of the 743 students who enrolled in the traditional lecture model, 364 passed, and of the 567 in the traditional lecture, 335 passed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this information in right now. So we have group one, and let's call this, um, what are we doing here? This is the traditional, let's see, we've got doo -doo -doo, the new model, student-centered, There were a total of 364 who passed out of a total of 743. And in group two, this is lecture centered. And in this group, 500 and, sorry, 300, I apologize. 335 passed out of 567. Oops, I got this backwards. I should be paying attention. So student-centered, this is you gotta make sure you're paying attention. Traditional lecture, there were 743. 364 passed. See, even I make mistakes. And then This should be student-centered. This is a typo on my part. So this is 335 out of 567. That's why I was getting myself all screwed up. So then does this evidence suggest that the student-centered model results in a higher pass rate than their traditional? So if we let P1 equal the proportion who passed, in the student center model, and let's P2 equal the proportion who passed in the lecture centered, lecturer centered model. If there's no difference between these two teaching methods, these two proportions should be equal to each other. Now our alternative, what we're trying to find out, is that the student-centered is that higher than the lecture. Since I've labeled group one student center, that would mean the proportion one would be greater than proportion two. So let's go ahead and perform a hypothesis test using technology. So let's move this over here. And let me just go ahead and start over. Remember, we need stat. We want tests. We want two proportion Z test, number six. And let's go ahead and enter. So group one, I have 335 successes out of 567. In group two, I have 364 out of 743. And we are trying to see greater than. So I see for this one, I've got a really tiny test statistic, or sorry, very large test statistic, I mean. Very small p-value, I meant. This is 3.627, about 3.63 standard deviations away. And this corresponds to really, really, really tiny. So this p-value is 0 0.0001, 1.42 times 10 to the negative 4 is the p-value. So the p-value, go ahead and move this out of the way. We don't need it anymore. The p-value is less than the significance level. It's much less, it's a very small p-value. 
So we have strong evidence that the student-centered model has a higher pass rate. And so these are a couple of examples.